Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're going to do this. We're creating animated glowing spheres in Cinema 4D and Octane. This video was brought to you by Skillshare, where you can get unlimited access to more than 22,000 full courses on a huge range of subjects. The courses are project-based and teachers take you through all the steps in creating everything from motion graphics to photography. And when you're done, you can share your work with teachers and the student community for feedback and support. We've actually got four CG Shortcuts courses on there now, covering a bunch of stuff beyond what we normally go into on YouTube. And we're releasing new courses all the time. So if you want to give Skillshare a try, the first 1,000 to click the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare's premium membership, giving you instant access to the entire catalogue of courses, including the courses from CG Shortcuts, so you can see if it's right for you. Now let's get back to the tutorial. Okay, so the setup we're going to be using for this tutorial is exactly the same as the setup we used probably about a year and a half ago in the abstract cloner tutorial we did. And I'll leave a link down below to where you can check that out. Basically, we've got a load of spheres cloned onto a plane and the deformation is happening with a displacer that has a bit of noise added to it. Pretty simple MoGraph setup, but the main part of this tutorial is going to be about setting up the shaders, specifically in Octane. So let's pause that and we'll rewind. Then over in our cloner, we just wanna make sure our instance mode is set to instance. And you'll also wanna make sure your dynamics tag is not cached yet because we need to set up the shaders first. So with our cloner selected, we'll go over to the MoGraph menu and we're going to bring in a shader effector. And with this guy, we need to head over to the parameter tab and we don't wanna affect the scale of these clones. So we'll disable that, but we do wanna affect the color. So where it says color mode, we wanna change this to a custom color. And we're actually going to set this to black so we can control this a bit easier later. Then we'll go over to the shading tab. And in the shader slot here, let's bring in a noise. And we'll click into that noise and scroll down to the bottom here. We need a bit more contrast on this. So let's bring this right up to 50%. And now we've got some nice variation from black to white across all of those clones. So now we're going to isolate this effect by using some fall off over here in the fall off tab. And for the shape of the field, let's use a box. And we can basically use this to mask a strip across here and limit the effect to just within that box. We're just masking it into a bit of a square shape in the middle here right now, because that's the shape of the box currently. So we'll just make sure we've got our box field selected. Then down here in the field controls, we just wanna narrow that box in a bit. So we'll make this 50 centimeters in the X axis. Then we don't need to worry about the Y axis, but we wanna stretch out the Z axis. So we'll just make that 300. And now we're masking those spheres in a nice long strip. And we can also adjust the edges of that effect by tweaking the fall off slider here. So we can make it sharper or a more gradual fall off. We can also do that down here in the remapping tab. If we adjust the inner offset, let's make it 85%. I think that gives us a nice fall off. Okay, so within the strip, we're going to have our glowing spheres, but we also need to make a shader for the other spheres outside of the strip here. And if we take a look at the example here, you can see they're all multiple colors. And we can actually shade them separately by coming back down to the fall off and adding a shader field. And we wanna make sure the blending mode is set to max. And with this selected, we'll go to field. And in this shader, we can also add a noise. And now we've got two sets of noise across all of our spheres. So next we're going to take this strip. So everything being affected by our box field and we can animate the position of this so it travels from one side to the other. So let's make sure we're at frame zero and we'll move it all the way over this side and just in the coordinates tab, we'll keyframe the X axis here. Then we'll go ahead two seconds, so 48 frames and we'll move that right to the other side and we'll set a keyframe there as well. So now if we rewind that and play, our box field is sweeping through all of our cloners and it's going to give us our nice strip of glowing spheres. But when it reaches the end, we also want our strip to loop back again. So let's set that up, we'll pause that. So let's right click on our animation here and under animation, let's show our F curves to bring up the timeline. And let's just move that over a tad. Firstly, we want this to be traveling at a nice steady pace. So we need to make these keyframes linear. So we'll select all of those and hit the linear button here. And if we select the position X here, we get these extra properties down here. 
And here's where we can set up our looping. So after that animation, we want this to repeat and then we just need to set how many repetitions we want. And we just need enough to go the full length of our timeline. So 10 repetitions should work for us. If we're 24 frames a second and we've got 240 frames. Okay, so we can close that now and let's check that out. So it gets to the end and loops back again. Okay, so that's it for the basic setup. Let's hop into Octane and set up the materials. Okay, so I've already added an Octane camera in here and just framed the shot up. And we've also got a simple lighting setup with an Octane HDRI environment. And you can see down here, this is our HDRI map. So nothing too fancy. Then I've also got a simple Octane glossy material, this guy here. I've just given that a bit of a white color and applied it to the plane here, just to fill in some of those gaps between the spheres. Okay, so let's set up our shaders for those clones. So we'll come up to materials and we're going to use an Octane mix material, but you could just as easily use a composite material or layered material. So let's bring that in. And rather than Oct mix, let's just call it mix. And we need to apply our mix material to our cloner. And we won't see anything at first because we need to go into our mix material and set that up. So we need to go into our node editor, which we've got docked in here. And in case you don't know where to find that, you can actually click into the material and under the basics tab over here, we've got a little shortcut button to bring up the node editor, which in our case just activates that window. All right, so our mix material comes pre-built with a float texture in the amount slot here. And this is going to control the mixing of the two materials we're about to plug in. So we'll do that now. Let's bring in a new material and plug that into material one slot. And to view this material only, we just need to go into our float texture. And if we bring this up to one, it's going to show whatever's in that material one slot. So no mixing. So let's tweak this guy and we'll make a little bit more space and just frame this up a bit. This material is going to be our base material. So a nice glossy multicolored shader for our clones. And then we'll mix in another material for our glowing spheres. So first we need to make this glossy. So in the basic tab here, let's just come down to material type and switch that over. And we also wanna change the reflections on here. So we'll go to the index and we'll make this more reflective and we'll change the index to 1.68. And now those spheres are looking nice and glossy. So now we need a way to drive our material with the shader effector we set up before. So we could come down here and use either the instance color or instance range. But I think in this case, we'll just scroll down here and we'll use the MG or motion graphics color shader. And we wanna plug that into the diffuse channel here because we wanna affect the color of our spheres. And you can see we're now getting those grayscale values across our spheres, just like we saw back in our viewport earlier. Although we don't see it now because octane materials don't really play so well with the viewport sometimes. Anyway, back to our node editor. We're going to use this to colorize our spheres. So if we just move this over here, we can drop an octane gradient in between these. And we can use this to remap our grayscale values to give them some color. So we can change our gradient to any colors we like. Let's go with a nice blue here. And we'll maybe add another color in here, maybe a lighter blue. And for our lighter values, let's remap this to yellow. Okay, so you can pick any color scheme you like. You can also come over here and click on this little arrow and load in one of the presets that come with Cinema 4D. I've actually made a gradient preset here, so let's use that. So I've just got some complementary colors from red to blue here. And these are the colors we used in the example. So that's our base color all sorted. Let's head over here and we'll set up our second material, which is going to be our glowing spheres. So let's go back to the top of our list here and bring in another octane material. And so we can see this in the viewport. Let's go back to our float texture. And all we need to do is switch this down to zero. And that's going to show us the mix of just the second material. And we do want our glowing spheres to be glossy as well. So we'll head back over to the basic tab. And this time we'll be a bit fancy and use the octane universal material. And this will allow us to have a glowing and glossy material. And by default, the universal material looks quite metallic. So we need to go over to that tab and just turn this value off. So now we've just got that glossy look. And because these are going to be glowing spheres, we also don't need any diffuse color. So we'll go to the albedo channel and we can just set this to zero or black. And now we can set up our glowing. So over in the emission tab, we can just add a black body emission, which is pretty intense by default. So let's go in there. And first we'll just half the power here, which is still pretty bright. 
Let's try enabling the surface brightness so the brightness is locked to the shape of our spheres, which didn't change things too much, but we'll fix that in a second. While we're here, let's also bring the temperature down into the warmer colors and give those spheres a nice warm glow. And because this is a mixed material, we can actually mix this with our colored material by using the float texture here and blend those two together. But we actually wanna isolate the glow to only a few of the spheres. So rather than using our float to mix these together, we can actually use the color shader. So let's make a copy of this and pipe that into the amount instead. And we can get rid of that float now. And now the mixing is being driven by those grayscale values from our shader effector through the color shader. But it does seem to be affecting all of our clones at the moment, but we just wanna isolate it to within our box field here. So we're going to need to remap our new color shader and we can do that down here with an octane gradient. So we'll just pipe that in here and we'll just stretch this out a bit. And if we tighten up this white value here, we can start to restrict that effect. And we're no longer seeing any glowing spheres in our viewport because in theory, this should now be restricted to only our darkest clones. And if you remember from the initial setup, our darkest clones were the ones within the box field. So to check that, let's head over to our viewport and we'll just play this through until we see our box field in frame again. And it's moving into the scene now. And you can see those glowing spheres are now being mapped to just the darker clones in our shader effector. And I think that's looking pretty cool and organic. And if we head back to our node editor, you can easily tweak the look of this just by tweaking that gradient again. If we select both of these knots here, we can try shifting this across and that's going to increase the range of uh, spheres we're affecting. Or we could stretch this out to increase that fall off. So just play around with this until you get something you like. I think we'll just keep this fairly limited and we'll play that to see what it looks like. And our animation doesn't look like it's updating. So we'll just switch back to the viewport and wait a second for that to catch up. And maybe we should rewind as well. Okay, now we'll hit play and it's looking good. All of those glowing spheres are now limited to just within the box field. And that's about it for this effect. You can always head back to the node editor and tweak this further with the gradient here or choose a completely different color scheme in this gradient. Or you could even adjust the color of the glow down in the black body. So see what you can come up with. To keep things organized, you might also wanna go in here and rename these. So we could go into this one and just call it colored spheres. And just so it's nice and clear what everything is, let's also rename this one to glow spheres. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. If you make something cool with this technique, make sure you post it on our Facebook group so we can check it out. As usual, you can download the project file below to save a bit of time or head over to our website where you can download every project file from every tutorial we've ever made. Big thanks to this month's patrons and CG insiders. You guys are the best and there's no way we could keep making these tutorials without your support. Cheers guys. Okay, that's it for now. I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you wanna see in the comment section down below or you can leave a like or dislike and don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. There's loads of extra resources on our website and you can win epic CG prizes in our monthly challenges. Check out cgshortcuts.com for more details. Catch you next time.